My name is Mike Shadow, and I will be your master of ceremonies today. Before I begin, I, I just want to tell you, you never know when you invite people to an open uh, assembly and an open program, how many people are going to show up. Uh, we are gratified that so many folks have shown up, and we have a, a, a very wonderful program set up for you today. First, a bit of housekeeping. Uh, there are restroom facilities and an elevator through that door right back there, and so you can make yourself available if you need. In addition, as you know, there are refreshments, there's some cookies over there, water, and they've been provided to us by ShopRite of Clinton. They always do a tremendous job for the Rotarians and for the folks in Hunterton County. I'd like to start with a few acknowledgments. Uh, we thank Father Jay, pastor of Immaculate Conception Parish, for providing the parish hall free of charge. Um, thank you, Father, uh, very much. We would also like to recognize the following groups for their financial support to make this program free of charge to the public. The Friendly Sons of St. Patrick, the North Hunter and Rotary Club, and patrons who placed ads in the program. And some of them are, are with us today. Some will not be speakers. Uh, Lynn Porter, realtor with Weikert. Uh, Pete Trucidia with uh, physical therapy at St. Luke's in the back there. Anita's Angels, Mr. Thomas Bay will be a speaker. Uh, Bob Jung, Round, Round Valley Financial. And Hughes, Fire and Security. We thank you for supporting this program. This program is the brainchild of Mr. John Hughes. How many people know John Hughes here? Great man. John put this entire program together. He secured the speakers. He arranged for the refreshments. He placed ads in about 12 newspapers. He created the program that you have. He procured this parish. He did everything, and he's not going to be here today. Yeah, he came under the weather. So thank you, John. We miss you. Uh, I'm going to do just a little spiel for him. I'll send his products in the back later on. We have several speakers who will speak for 15 minutes each. There'll be a short question and answer period at the conclusion. You can read the bios of our presenters in the program. There's a very important thing I want, I want to point out here, is that each one of these presenters, each one of these tables, each one of these police groups, in his or her own way, helps to make Hunterton County one of the healthiest, safest, and educationally excellent counties in the entire United States. I'm not talking about wealth. I'm not talking about amount of property. But in terms of health and safety and education, this is one of the greatest counties in the country. So thank you very much for what you do for us. Now, with no further ado, I will bring Mr. Robert Jung financial planner with uh, Round Valley Financial, and he will give his talk. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mike mentioned education. If you don't know it, if your children have gone to North Hunterdon or Voorhees, he was the superintendent for close to 20 years, so that's why we have a great educational system in the county. Um, <clears throat> today, I'm just going to go over a few planning items that I've seen over the years that are important, especially for seniors. Uh, one of them just hit, hit us right in the face recently, inflation, it's back. What are you gonna do about it? Uh, you can do a few things about it. I don't know if anybody, does anybody remember the 1970s and early 1980s when inflation was rampant? My grandparents were in their mid 70s, retired, it, it hurt. So what can we do about it? Because it's definitely back and it's here for a while. So one thing you can do is sit down and do a budget. When I meet with people, maybe 30% of the people have a budget. 
Um, but everybody should have a budget, especially now, because you want to look at where does all of your income come from? So security, a pension, investment accounts, IRAs, and you want to get a feel for that and see if you can increase it at all. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you have a portfolio and you can switch things around and get more dividends. Sometimes you can't. So that's the next step. You have to write down, what are all your expenses? Uh, and I do meet with people and they're like, I don't know, I just pay them. No, you have to sit down and list out all of your hard expenses that you have to pay no matter what. Your property tax, you have to pay that. Your insurances, your car payments and all that. <laughs> write that down. And then on the next column, you're going to write down your expenses that are variable. Going out to dinner, cable, different uh, expenses. Because you're going to get to a point at some time, hopefully you won't, but if you do, what do you need to cut on one column so you can continue to fill the other column? So it's a simple exercise. People don't do it, but you have to do it now because of inflation. So that's the first big thing is uh, prepare for inflation. You can deal with it, and that's about it. Uh, the next thing I see is people don't review their beneficiaries. And things happen. I mean, things change. Spouse passes away. God forbid your children pass away. Sometimes there's a bad son-in-law son or daughter-in-law that come up. So you should review all of your beneficiaries. You start with your insurance policies. You start with uh, your retirement accounts, 401k, IRAs, and your annuities. Sometimes I'll meet with people and they have these accounts all over the place. And you have to go to each one and see who's going to get, who's the beneficiary? What, how's this uh, money going to transfer? And you can do things to, to tweak things and change things because recently I had a case where one of the son-in-laws turned out not to be so good and we had to go in and change it. And so you always want to keep an eye on that. So the second big thing that I see is beneficiaries. You want to do a beneficiary review. And you try to do it anytime there's a change. And that leads us to the next step. Believe it or not, probably 30% of the people I meet don't have a will at all. And the other 30%, another 30% have a will, but it hasn't been updated since they were married, like 50, 60 years ago. So you want to dust off your will and see a local attorney and make sure it's up to date. Because the same thing with the beneficiaries. Things change, uh, and you, this controls your property and your assets and how they're going to be distributed. And yes, I know from spouse to spouse it's okay, but sometimes things happen. People get separated. People uh, pass away. I have a quick story about that. I manage a few 401k plans. We had a hotshot salesman. He was in the plan. He was married. He left the company after about 18 years. So he went to another company and on and on. And then he passed away. So his second wife, who was, he was separated from, came in to collect the money. And lo and behold, on the form, it was the first wife was still the beneficiary. <laughs> So in the meantime, he separated with the second wife and took up with somebody else. So it was a mess. And legally, we paid to the person who was the beneficiary. So if he had a will, he, and he didn't have a will either. It was a mess. So you always want to have a will. It, the lawyers, they're not really going to bite you. You just want to do it and get it done with. Uh, and life's a lot easier for your family if you had a will, and an updated one also. And the last thing I want to point out is um, you want to have somebody that could come in, God forbid if you become incapacitated either mentally or physically, and take care of business on your behalf. And that's where you get a power of attorney. So it's important you sit down and you think about which child or niece or nephew or person could come in and take care of it. Pay your bill, pay your electric bill, pay your property tax. Uh, a couple years ago, what, an attorney friend of mine gave me a pro bono case and said, I want you to help out this lady. Well, they were foreclosing on her condo. And what happened was she broke her hip, she went to the hospital, she went to a rehab center, and she didn't pay her property tax. She missed maybe three payments. It was a long time. And somebody was buying liens on her and was trying to foreclose on it. So that's why you need to have a power of attorney and you need to have somebody that could step in and pay it. And what I do now is people retire, I'll get it where their income goes into, let's say, one checking account. And then we get it automatically set up to pay the property taxes. And at the end of the year, if they went up, we could settle with them. But that's very important. That's the one bill you don't want to miss, because somebody could come in 
and uh, do that. You also need um, the same thing with medical, when it comes to uh, medical issues. Somebody should be there as you have a medical directive. Uh, be able to say, okay, do the operation. I know your spouse can, but things get crazy sometimes. And in, and in my own case, my mother was sick, my father was a little distraught, he's 91. So one of my sisters had it, but she got very emotional and she couldn't make any changes. So um, it was hard. So you always have to pick who the best person is gonna be that could come in and help you. And it's all written, it's all in a folder. Once you do it, you don't have to worry about it until something happens and you dust it off and say, okay, this person is my, has my medical directive. Maybe it'll be a different person that, that has your power of attorney to pay your bills. It doesn't have to be the same person. Um, and that leads into who's going to maintain your property. You want to think about all this now because later on, as things happen, it gets very, time seems to go really quick. Things get condensed and confusing. Who's going to maintain your property? And who's going to come in and maintain you? So while you're still in sound mind and body, you would go out and interview different agencies. And we have one here today in Eaters Angels where they come into your home and help take care of you. And it means a lot uh, to do that before you have to go to a facility. So um, you want to do all of this in advance. You uh, interview them and you put it in a folder. So anything happens, you point to the a folder, one of the kids or the power of attorney goes in and pulls out the file and says, okay, this is the agency that's going to come by and take care of uh, you. So those are just some of the key points that I've seen over the years in financial planning that if you do this in advance, life's a lot better as time goes on. And when you need something, it's already there. You're not going to have your house, uh, you know, somebody's not going to buy liens on your home. Somebody can come in and pay your bills. Some, you have an agency that's going to come in and when you pass away your assets are going to go to the right people because you've been on top of it and while you're still here and everything's going well you can fight off inflation because you'll know what bills you can cut back on and where you to redirect the money so thank you for your time I'll be in the back later uh, if anybody has any questions there you go Mike thank you, thank you. Good job. nice job very nice job, Bob. Uh, our next speaker is Ms. Patricia Toto with Hunter and Healthcare. Patricia. You can bring that down. <laughs> oh, no, it's good. Good, af good afternoon, everyone. My name is Patricia Toad. I'm a speech language pathologist with Hunter in Home Health. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to be talking to you about home safety as it relates to fall precautions. Now, I want to ask all of you, how many of you have fallen or know someone that has fallen recently in, in the home or, or anywhere? All right, I see a lot of hands up, unfortunately. So it may surprise you that one in three adults 65 and older fall every year. That's a lot, right? Now, you may be wondering, why are falls especially dangerous for older adults, okay? Well, older adults are hospitalized for fall-related injuries five times more often than they are for injuries from other causes. 20 to 30% of falls cause moderate to severe injuries that make it hard to get around or for you to live independently. If you're injured after a fall, you may be less able to move around and do the activities that you used to enjoy. Can everybody hear me? Because I feel like I'm not coming through the, everybody hear me okay? Okay. Move the mic over. Is it on? I don't know how to. Is that better? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. You may, you may need help to do many of the things that you were used to doing by yourself before you fell. And after you fall, of course, you're gonna be limited in your ability to do activities. And unfortunately, decreased physical activity can lead to other medical problems such as pneumonia and blood clots. And it just, it just takes more time for older adults to recover after an injury, more so than a younger adult. Now, why are older people more likely to fall? There are many reasons. One of them is problems with balance, right? 
as you age, your muscles may weaken and you may lose your balance more often. Uh, balance can also be affected by certain medications that you take, the amount of sleep you get, and other medical problems. Getting out of a bed or chair too quickly. Some medicines may make you feel weak, dizzy, or lower your blood pressure. And certain medications may cause swelling, pain, or stiffness in your joints and muscles. Trouble moving due to pain or stiffness may cause you to fall. So, move slowly, move slowly while you're getting up from a lying or sitting position. Getting up too quickly can cause blood pressure to drop and can make you feel faint. So, sit on the side of your bed for about a minute before you get out of bed, okay? Decreased activity is another reason older people fall. And it, it puts you at risk of falling and other injuries when you restart an activity, such as walking, riding a bike, or using exercise machines. So consider an activity in the short term <laughs> where it's less likely that you may fall until you get stronger again. A really great activity is, is swimming, okay? Any, any type of exercise in the water. Another reason a lot of older adults fall is taking medic certain medications. Medications for anxiety, nervousness, problems sleeping, and also taking four or more medications, okay? Some medicines may make you feel tired, dizzy, less alert, which affects your coordination and balance. This slows down your reaction time, making it harder for you to catch yourself when you're falling. Medicines that treat mood problems or pain may also increase your risk of falling. Taking many different medications increases a chance that they won't work well with each other. So it is very important, and I cannot stress this enough, let all your doctors know about all the medicines you're taking and not just the prescription ones, even supplements, topical ointments, any special teas or tinctures, CBD, and nowadays medical marijuana, okay? It's very important to let your doctor know about everything you are taking, okay? All right, what else causes falling in older adults? Poor eyesight and hearing, okay? Even small changes in vision and hearing can make you less stable. You may need hearing aids, you may need glasses, or you may need a stronger pair of glasses. You may have cataracts, which can make seeing at night difficult. Wearing reading glasses while doing other physical activities may change your ability to see how close or far away objects are, which could cause you to fall. So it's important to see your doctor regularly so they can suggest ways to manage your vision and your hearing problems, okay? Certain medical conditions just predispose older adults to falling. Uh, conditions such as dementia, Parkinson's disease, urinary, urinary incontinence, COPD, osteoarthritis, cardiovascular disorders, diabetes, hypertension. Those are just some of the main ones, okay? But there are others. So you may be wondering, well, what can I do to keep from falling, right? Good question. So probably the most important thing you can do is to exercise regularly. Walking helps you to maintain balance and helps strengthen your muscles and keeps your heart healthy. And walking also keeps your bones strong, which may prevent a broken phone, God forbid you do fall, right? Exercising in water is gentle on the joints. Water also acts as resistance, strengthening the muscles in your body. But it's very important to talk to your doctor before you start a new exercise program. You can work with them to help find the program that's best for you, okay? And it's always best to start a program slowly and then increase the amount and frequency as you get stronger, okay? Exercises that help preserve your balance are probably going to be the most useful to you to help prevent falls. Another thing you can do to keep from falling is keep all appointments with your doctors. Don't postpone them. Don't cancel them because they can check for conditions that may cause a fall and suggest treatment. They may also suggest a physical therapist or occupational therapist that can help, help you to gain strength and talk to you about safety in your home. 
Um, also ask your doctor about a bone density test. If you haven't had one, I highly recommend one. A bone density test tell you how strong your bones are. And there are certain medications that are available that can make your bones stronger and harder to break. And of course, it goes without saying that a healthy, well-balanced diet may prevent illness. That can make you feel stronger and prevent those falls in the first place, right? So getting enough calcium and vitamin D in your diet can help protect against bone loss. And stronger bones obviously will decrease your risk of breaking bones if you do fall. Um, drinking plenty of fluids, make sure you stay hydrated. Not drinking enough water-based fluids may cause dizziness and weakness, which, which can cause falls, especially in the summer, hydrate. So what are some recommendations to make your home safe, okay? With regards to flooring, have any holes or uneven areas in, um, in your floors or sidewalks fixed. If you spill something, wipe it up ASAP. Clear your pathways. Make sure there are no loose objects in, in your way that could cause you to trip over them. Create color contrast between walls and floors. Light colored floors are easier to see. And it's also e easier to see objects that may be in your path if they're on a light colored floor. Obviously have enough lighting on so you can see clearly um, your pathway, right? <coughs> keep all cords, lighting cords, TV cords, phone cords, keep them secured and out of the way. And never put cords underneath carpeting or across an area where you walk. Because a lot of people do that. I see that in many of my patients' homes. Secure carpeting to the floor around all the edges. Remove throw rugs or secure them with double-sided tape or special backing. In the winter, keep walkways level and keep them clear of ice and snow. Okay, now with regards to stairs, steps, and hallways, have loose or damaged stairs fixed as soon as possible. If your stairs are not carpeted, paint the top of each stair with an easy to see color and then maybe paint the first step and the last step a different color. Do not use dark or patterned carpeting on stairs. Solid and lighter colored carpeting makes it easier to see the edges of the steps. In stairs, install sturdy handrails on both sides of stairs, making sure that they're attached tightly. Hold on to the rails every time you use the stairs. Place light switches at the top and bottom of staircases. And it's also a good idea to leave a flashlight by the stairs in case there's a power outage, right? Because we get a lot of those in Clinton. The wind blows and the power goes out, right? And never place or leave objects on stairs. Have ramps installed in your house if a household member has trouble using the stairs. Now we get to the important room, the bathroom. 80% of falls occur in the bathroom, okay? It may be a good idea to have carpet installed instead of linoleum or tiles because the latter are slippery when wet. Do not leave objects in the tub or on the shower floor. Install non-skid strips or a tub mat on the floor of the tub or shower and also place one outside the tub or shower when you get out. Uh, remove bars of, bars of soap from your shower and instead use a liquid soap dispenser that's attached to the wall of the shower tub. Why? A bar of soap may fall, making the floor slippery or, or the tub or shower floor slippery, right? If you have trouble getting into and out of a tub, try placing a chair, a shower chair in the tub. A plastic chair will work, where, will work well as well just make sure that the chair is sturdy and has non-skid feet. Install grab bars on walls around tubs or showers and next to your toilets. Evidence-based studies show that grab bars reduce falls in older adults. Consider installing a handheld shower to make it easier to rinse while you're sitting in your shower chair or uh, tub. If your toilet seat is low, consider installing a raised toilet seat. Bedroom, make sure your bed is high enough so you can get into and out of bed easily. 
Okay, and make sure that your bed doesn't move because some beds have the legs with the wheels on them. If they do, take those wheels off, okay? Put a phone, bell, or whistle by your bed so you can call for help when you need help, okay? Make sure you can easily reach a light source from your bed, especially if you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, okay? Make sure the lights always turn on first. Sit on, and, and I mentioned this before, sit on the side of the bed for one to two minutes after you wake up because getting out of bed too fast can cause you to feel dizzy and possibly fall. Keep a commode, urinal, or bedpan close to the bed if needed, okay? In the kitchen, place things that you use most often within easy reach, okay? So you're not having to, you know, uh, to reach unsafely and lose your balance and fall. Furniture. Arrange chairs, couches, tables, etc., so you can move around them easily. Footstools and ottomans can cause falls, so when you're not using them, move them out of your path, okay? Select chairs that are easy to get in and out of. Chairs with arms are helpful because they can help you get up and get down. And always put footrests um, on recliners into the closed position before getting into and out of the chair. Perhaps adding extra cushions to raise the height of low chairs or couches um, may make it easier for you to stand up or sit down, okay? Place your phone where you can easily get to it, right? So that when the phone rings, you're not having to, to rush to go answer it. Keep, keep it near you, okay? Do not ever use a chair to reach for items in high places. What should you do instead? Use a step stool with handles or use those, what are the, the re reaching sticks? But, yes, thank you. Another thing, do not furniture surf. Does anybody know what that is, furniture surfing? Okay. Using, your, using furniture to steady yourself as you walk, that's called furniture. Don't do that, right? Because you know, chairs are not, are not always stable and they may give way and cause you to fall. So no furniture surfing. Okay. Lighting. Make sure all rooms and hallways are well lit. Leave a light on at night to help you find your way to the bathroom. Putting night lights in other rooms and hallways is also a good idea, okay? Place light switches within easy reach of your bed. Use light switches and electrical outlets that light up at night so you can see them more easily, okay? Clothing. Wear low-heeled shoes with rubber soles or non-slip soles that are fully that fully support your feet and that fit well. So not not too loose, but not too tight. Wear them even when you're walking around inside your house and especially when exercising. Keep your shoes near your bed for when you have to get up at night to use the bathroom. Wearing only socks or smooth soled shoes on bare floors is unsafe. So I don't recommend that. Um, your night clothes, your PJs, make sure they fit properly so that you don't step on them or trip or trip on them if you need to get up, okay? Use a cane or walker if you need to, to feel steadier when you walk or to steady yourself when you're getting up. Uh, consider using a uh, medical alarm like Life Alert uh, around your neck. These devices bring peace of mind to you and your loved ones. And finally, Consider a home safety assessment from a company like Back Home Safely. They can help you assess your home environment and suggest ways to make it safer. They can also provide assistance and safety devices that reduce your risk of falling so that you can enjoy living in your home independently and safely for many years to come. Any questions? Thank you, Patricia. You know, for a minute there, as Patricia was talking, I thought I was listening to my wife. <laughs> because I think half of what, <laughs> what she talked about, my wife tells me all the time. Because I've just had a serious operation, and she's always after me to do certain things to make my life a little more safer. So thank you, Patricia. Our next speaker is Mr. Thomas Bay, Thomas M. Bay, and he is owner and founder of Anita's Angels. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for having us here to uh, be able to speak to you today about awareness of safety in your home. Uh, I have been a neighbor of Mr. Hughes for many years, and uh, he is a tremendous gentleman. His wife is a sweetheart, and uh, so I want to thank both of them for uh, Anisha and his daughter who helped put these programs together. So I want to thank them all for, uh, you know, their part in today's uh, get together. So thank you for coming and thank you for supporting uh, your parish here and safety awareness for seniors. Um, just to give you a little bit, you know, the speech from the Hunter Medical Center covered all the ground that I was going to cover. So she just about said it all regarding um, everything that was needed at home. So I would say that it is so critical to make your home surroundings safe and uh, comfortable for you. You deserve to be comfortable in your own surroundings. You have worked hard to maintain your homes and have them uh, after many years of hard work. So um, the uh, tips regarding rugs in the hallway and lights when you go to bed and chair glides when you go up the steps and um, uh, lift chairs, which puts you to a standing position and canes and walkers are all part of